Welcome everyone to the 242nd weekly MLP Drawing School live critique stream. It's uh, October 20th, and it's uh, five minutes past six. You know, about on time. Uh, yeah, we got we got a small army of people here, so let's just start off right in the middle because that seems like the right spot to go. Uh, and we got the mouse who's sneaking up behind you. Cute pencil case. Squeak, squeak, knife. Uh, down at the bottom of the list, we got uh, the person most likely to have to take away the knife from CPC, Princess Fluffy's Eye. Yes, can we please say knife safety, CPC? We talked about this. Knife. <laughs> and then well, up at you the just top, killed me, so. <laughs> we got uh, Alley Cloud, the most likely person to have to take the knife away from Fluffy's Eye. <laughs> well, oh, I, I, the knife is oh, in my oh. chest, so please do. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm not certified medically, um, but I'll I'll draw a band aid for you. <laughs> okay, that'll help. I think the knife should stay there. It's keeping the blood still. <laughs> Listen, just don't get the blood <laughs> on my man. Cut the plasters around it, around the. Leave me, I'm a biologist. Yeah, you can put the plasters around it to make sure the knife doesn't move. <laughs> and then, uh, second to the last on the list, we got Pixie Nut. The person most likely to have to educate us on how to properly shank someone. <laughs> hey, mate, you think that's a knife? Well, it is. It's pretty dangerous. <laughs> hey, what up? This is from Australia, Danny. <laughs> and we have uh, the living dead person. Yeah. Just living and dead. The zombie we who also once had been stabbed. <laughs> but, but last Wait, but not least, about we did. But we didn't no, talk we did. about Plum. They're, oh, they're Jim, Plum. You know, someone missing. <laughs> yes. The, the one who photographed together. the crime scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all right. also hey, biologist. She can, she can confirm. Plasters are on the knife. Yeah. Yeah. Flawless intro, guys. Like, flawless um, intro. Good on one. Tiny piece of paper and uh, take notes on the behavior of uh, knife mouse. She's just going to nerd this shit up. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got up one swear. <laughs> Yes, it we was don't an alley this time. Like, now we just do crocodile. We just go crocodile. We just throw crocodiles at people? Or is the knife the crocodile? Oh no. The knife's it's no, a the crocodile with the knife. Made you of just knives. hold it as if it's a knife. Oh, even better. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. This... No, yeah, throw that on the crocodile thing. <laughs> Alright, so this is how this stream's going. This is great. Um. Zara, we we see you hiding in the chat. Do you want to start off, or do you want to hide out in the darkness? Hiding in the darkness with a knife? We stare, we wait. They'll hide for now? Okay. Uh, make sure you put on your uh, Freddy Jorge's mask. Uh, it'll be great. Oh, God. <laughs> gotta, gotta prep for the spookiness. Which everyone should just be playing doctor, because everyone should be wearing a mask. Yeah. <laughs> or ninja, or you can be Kakashi no. from Naruto. No, that's fine. Yeah. The, the, the original mask wearer. As I'll, just, I'll be a werewolf and just wear a fursuit. I think that's safe. <laughs> I'll, put the, I'll put the mask over the fursuit. Hey, I know. And yeah. inside. Do they, do they make those? I, I assume someone's made those, like the giant yes. tentacle. No, come There's on. There's no way. It's... Someone <laughs> go find me a picture. It. I need a picture of a fur suit with a giant mask on it. it has fur to exist. suit wearing mask. <laughs> yeah, this seems like the Google answer. Mm. All right, and we're gonna start off with our first picture while CPC oh, finds me. Fur suits are masks, so this is more difficult than I thought. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, this is by Love Senator it. C. It's a picture I drew a while back. What do y'all think I can improve on? It's freaking funny. Um, at least what's going on. I do have a note. Uh, come come at us with your latest pictures. Because pictures you drew a, a while ago could mean yesterday, it could mean six months ago, it could mean two years. We had someone submit a picture that was three years old. That That's not useful for anyone. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> that's <laughs> it, It's not useful for the progression of your art because it's not showing where you are today. This is why we always ask, submit your latest piece of work, the, the one that is bothering you at this point, the one you have questions at. Mm. This is an adorable picture, and I freaking love the colorings, like pink and the sort of gray teal. They work well together. They're just good. 
Yeah, this the the style is um, really really cool, uh, reminiscent of a lot of different stuff. Um, here I'm just sort of pudging out the neck a bit because if this was a more like a uh, full horse, you'd sort of have the neck here, you'd have this come down, something like roughly along these lines, then you'd have like the back of everything there. Uh, having it more like this just has it like sort of going off into like nothingness a little bit. This adds a little bit more uh, certainty to the look of everything. Uh, you can probably make the ear a little bit more big. Or at least I would, just to um, sort of, you know, add a little bit more interest. I like the, um, the shape and the curves and everything like that, but just making it a little bit bigger. And something to consider is that uh, on the face, you've got the eyes sort of going this way. It's like this middle line going through them. And this uh, muzzle is sort of positioned this kind of way. Which, you know, for a, you know funny little picture like this is alright and it might even like sort of enhance the picture a bit but if you're looking to um, do something that's like more constructed more like a normal uh, sort of horse a normal sort of picture it might be good to uh, you know just look at different sort of ways you can represent this sort of thing as well have like you know the front plane of it and then here it's like uh, going off the side, so it's like a box, it would be like, you know, going into the distance there and that sort of thing. But I like it. It's a good, uh, good penny. I, I honestly haven't added any. Th oh my god! Stop. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> You have to be there to to get what the heck we're talking about half the time. But in this case, uh, I'm being very helpful. Yeah, you've done it. You've done an honestly good job. I I still mm. highly suggest fire us some new horse if you got new horse, um, because of course the new horse is the. I don't know where I'm going with this rhyming couplets. It's great. New horse is better. Um, they they have the new horse smell. I do like that you've made the mane interact with the, the like glitter cloud for its name. That's fun. That's some interesting layering gone on. It shows some consideration put into there. Little elements like that are top, top notch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, shall mm. we just move on to the next one? Well, I just I get uh, two very small things. Uh, the first thing, it might be a style thing, like if you if you like that and that's what you want to go for, it's completely okay, but I'm wondering why your horn is on top of the mane and not the opposite. Uh, like the base of the horn. Like, mm. uh, it seems a bit weird that the horn would be placed there. And another thing, but that's just like... Something that happens on drawing sometimes is like forgot to color this part. <laughs> so unless yeah. the body is just white there, like what's happening? But yeah, that's pretty much it. It's a good pun. I like this pun. It says wolf, so it's good. Hmm. Good horse. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Awesome. To Lyra, unless if Zermagrrrrrrr is available. Lyra. Lyra. Lyra, 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 Lyra. This is by Structor125, a simple Lyra. Thanks for your help. Oh, they already thanked us. No problem. Aww. Aww. All right, we're done then. Let's next one. They thanked us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm trying to find a 
I don't Dang. think I've ever seen a picture more in need of the second ear. I'm just going to do all oh, these things. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, the, the shape of the head, I'm having a hard time wondering if that doesn't go up there. Uh, out of the Tart. hair itself. No, it should be just about fine. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. What with mm. her skinny legs? She looks like a teen. <laughs> Oops. Bink. CPC oh. has definitely found the picture I was looking for. <laughs> Is it the one where the... the... The super long fall for mask. Um. Okay, that's eerie. Um. It's a beard. It's hard to find a uh, colour that actually works on this picture because there's such a difference in colour of the pony and the background and all that sort of stuff. Hoping that this blue shows up right, this sort of darkish blue. Uh, this picture is good, it's a good horse. Uh, the pose is actually interesting. Um, this is a kind of a pose that we don't see too much from. Uh, uh, people at this sort of drawing level because of the tough to sort of get the whole thing. Um, on the top of the front hooves, um, it just like bulges out a little bit and there's like a little bit of like a shoulder thing. So hoof here, shoulder here, and then it kind of just like, you know, all comes together. So you have this sort of... Uh, connection, strong connection to the uh, front of the body there. Uh, this sort of hole shape here is a bit interesting. What you've done here in terms of overlapping the, the belly and showing the belly in front of everything is good. You can make it a little bit more uh, steep and do something like boom and then it's a similar kind of a story for the uh, for the whole back thigh area sort of thing. You've got this sort of big mass of stuff here, so you can uh, tuck that under a little bit more. And then, <clears throat> how I like to get the um, front this sort of line shaped nicely is I have this sort of poking in this way, and then I have it like sort of angling out to the towards the hoof. That's an exaggerated, but uh, that's kind of the shape I tend to go for, and it looks pretty good. Uh, we also just cut the uh, back here. Uh, but because we're looking at it from sort of this, uh, the angle that we are, this whole back section is going to end up looking something like that with like a pretty shallow curve over the, the rump here, so just cut that off there and sort of, you know, you can have it sort of do something like this. Oh, that should be good. Uh, Ali's doing some good drawing over here. The, the muzzle and all that sort of stuff. Don't stress too much about the look of that. You'll just like sort of learn more about how that looks and all that as you draw more and as you like study other artists probably make it a little bit less 100% uh, rounded and all that sort of stuff and similar with this ear it'll just get better as you go there and as you try out different ear styles but something like it, it's a it's usually a good idea when you're doing ears to um at least when you're starting out doing them to uh, have one side fairly straight and one side fairly curved. It's it's a way to sort of just create an interesting sort of looking ear um, pretty easily. And then as you go, you sort of can explore different styles and maybe end up with something more like what Ali's done there or something like that. 
there's really many ways to do it and um as mm. pixie's saying studying from other artists um the show other animals seeing how actual horse ears look it, it's a very easy to have like a combination you you have a wealth of information and you'll you'll find how you like to do your ears the best so don't feel like oh this is my style i'm set in stone explore like arts just explore experiment if you're not doing that in art and you're still having fun i won't say no but like if you want to learn stuff and you're not having fun go explore try new things hmm 100 percent and also the horn can be bigger so i'll make it bigger but this is a really good picture i like the stuff you're exploring and messing with and i'm excited to see you explore some more hell yeah art keep exploring <laughs> Need to explore, or else we're gonna ban you from uh, doing art ever again. Totally, he has spoken. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on to our next one. Mm -hmm. It is by Blazing to my fool. <laughs> I know they told me how to do it last time, but it's almost a game of never speaking a name right. <laughs> So this is hours 13 and 14 of my drawing practice. This is the second picture they've done. Uh, we actually had a little uh, discussion about your art and improvement, and it was fun. We, we talk mm. about things. So, so with this one, he's got I it. specifically wanted to mention doing this, like looking at reference and then trying to redraw it and knowing this sort of stuff, that is awesome, and it's good, and it's great. And I'm going to slightly change the color of my pen so I don't get to do the thing. But um, something that's really interesting is uh, learning to uh, really, really look at what's going on and drawing what you look. For example, this uh, uh, whole shape here, if you looked at the reference, you've got sort of this pop shape. It sort of dips down and goes over here. You've got the sort of front. And then you've got this sort of back line here. And it's really easy to, to just go, all right, you know, uh, this attaches to there. Cool. Good. Uh, use that so it doesn't... It's really easy to sort of just, uh, you know, take a quick look and then do that and then be done with that. But if you... Um, focus in and look at sort of the curves that each line is making then you start to see things like all right this curve sort of down and then connects down there in that sort of way and that's that's kind of stuff that you'll just pick up on uh, as you go similar sort of with this front hair thing it's really easy to sort of do what you've done there which is just sort of like curve curve and that can look all right that can like work fine but as you um, sort of slow down a little bit and sort of pay attention to the curves, you've got this top curve, something like that, bottom curve, something like that, curves up there, and then it sort of curves down and around. So don't be don't be too worried to sort of just slow down a little bit and pay attention to drawing what you see. And that's that's something that you'll sort of need to reinforce every once in a while, because it's really easy to just um, do the same thing when you're drawing people. You know, I'll look at something and I'll just be like, all right, I'll draw an ear, and then I'll finish and I'll, I'm like, oh no, that actually doesn't look anything like the person's ear. That's just like a normal sort of standard ear thing. So. Yeah. It's a good, uh, good references and good sketching and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. I would also like mention, um, don't be afraid to draw over your references. Like, if you were taking the Luna, don't be afraid to break her down in order to figure out how to do it next to her. So like, oh, the face is a circle. We see that. And there's this like little shape that comes out to make the muzzle. So then it's easier to rep 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 replicate. I can, I can say words, I promise. <laughs> over here um so we have our circle and then oh wait where do i put on the muzzle okay so if i cut the circle in half it's it's a little more than half i guess up there so if i 
No, here's a half. Well, maybe I want a little taller, and then I can have that line and boop. And oh wait, there's a cheek here I forgot because my initial shape didn't include that. And you can go back and whoop, and just going back and forth, drawing over it and then recreating it can really help just that breakdown and then trying to recreate it yourself using those breakdowns. Just It helps me um, learn a reference or learn something of anatomy. Um, and you're gonna wanna do this with like all the references. It's like different types, show style, real animals, other artists, just go wild have fun with drawing over it and trying to redraw next to it and then you know whatever whatever you want to try and that way you'll pick up different things that'll you know int like influence your style you'll pick up different anatomy portions you didn't you know think about sometimes because i know like pixie's saying like our brains get into this point where like yeah i know what i'm doing and then you got to really pay attention to that reference and be like oh no wait there's actually an extra bone that I keep forgetting in this leg because this animal has a different bone structure and I'm thinking it's the same as everything else. All that fun stuff. Yeah! Yeah, I, I have like a whole lot of uh, pictures, uh, files on my computer that are just like me pulling up a whole bunch of different people's art putting it on to a single file and then just like drawing this sort of stuff over the top of it. So like, you know, I'll literally just draw over the top of the reference and then uh, once I'm done, hide the reference and sort of look at, okay, what sort of shapes have I actually like sort of constructed? Mm. And where are things and how do I replicate this for my own stuff? Yeah. And then I steal all their techniques and it makes my art better. And then I can draw my own art. But don't stress too much. Yeah, like like you're only on like sort of I think thirteen or fourteen, hour thirteen or fourteen or something like that. So, so you've got keep a long, up. long way to go. Definitely keep it art. up. Don't mm -hmm. stop now. Art's not a sprint, it's a full on marathon that's years. So have fun with it. it. It sounds scary, but just have fun with it. Don't worry about getting quick too fast. Good too fast. Mm. Or not good. That's terrible. I should never say good. Because <laughs> that's so vague. Anyway, just enjoy uh, yeah. and learn and all the fun things. This, this sort of stuff is exactly what you need to be doing in order to improve, which is you're drawing. You're doing the good stuff. All right. Shall we move on to our last picture submitted? Zara. Bob. Jim. Doug. Humans. Uh... Humans. So Zara I think is how you pronounce her name. I think so. That's close enough. I think there's a uh, flick of a desk at some point in there, too. All right, do you have any questions in particular for us on this one? Hmm. It's really nice you submitted a reference into our chat. That's appreciated. Cause oh, I see. Human. Humans, yeah. I mean, yours is amazingly well lit compared to theirs, but yours makes a lot more sense in the future because lighting is cheaper than health insurance. Just saying, guys. If you may, are making people call, crawl through Jeffrey tubes every single day, just light them well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drawing a little bit on top. Had a hard time with the pose, and the hand gave you trouble. Uh, I think you approached the pose right. You, you found a reference. Uh, I would almost say do the reference yourself at this point. I It's useful to have like the, the Star Trek reference, but you can also just kneel on the ground with the cell phone and take a few pictures around yourself to get an idea of where the rest of the body goes. Like One of the questions would be, Where's the back end of the legs? Because they just fall into uh, the ether. I assume whatever she's crawling from has eaten her legs in the Jeffreys tube at this point, which would make sense for Star Trek 
Um, but she doesn't seem to be bouncing off walls, so we're not quite there yet. So, am I still sort of... Uh, actually, let me see if I'm able to uh, do this sort of thing. Uh, and draw. And... Uh, uh, Oh. Cool, 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 cool. Good. So, if you look at the... Uh, what I've sort of done here, um, I've just sort of sketched out the head shape in a, a bit more of a front-on sort of way that matches the reference. And two pretty important landmarks here are the um, sort of these positions right here. Boom, and boom. And if you look at it on the reference, this one is shorter, this this like line here, and this line is a bit longer. And so I've just sort of exaggerated that um, in the drawing just because that's kind of uh, highlights the specific pose that we've got going there. Uh, Ines, oh, it's reconnecting for me. Thank you, Aggie. In a in a similar kind of way, um, I've done a same thing with just this arm, where if you look at it on the reference, there's a very slight sort of tilt out and then tilt back in. And because I've sort of brought this uh, this point here in, I can afford to sort of express that in the whole drawing there. In a same kind of way with this back leg, you've got this kind of like tingle here, if you look pretty closely. And as you've got this leg comes forward a bit, that leg goes back a bit. It's it's hard to kind of see the pose entirely from, from this reference, just because um, all of this area is basically like obscured in black. So you're sort of just making uh, up what's inside there which which is why for a pose like this um it can be really good to um also try doing it yourself or do something like that so you know just get a get a phone chuck it onto um uh, movie mode movie recording mode put it like or put it somewhere up in a bookshop or something like that and then just like try it out yourself or something because doing, if you do something like that, you'll be able to actually see sort of where things go and all that sort of stuff in this area. Like because um, the person is crawling, everything is like weirdly foreshortened, and you've got all these sorts of different things to keep in mind. And there's a lot of possible ways to kind of get things wrong there and all that sort of stuff when you're like looking at it from this angle but you've done a good job and let me turn that back oh look yeah. humans are tough I just like I, I noticed, look, looking at the reference you sent, um, the, like, the placement of the camera is not exactly the same uh, on your drawing as it is on the reference, since the reference is very, very close from floor, can I? I don't know if that counts as floor, grid, things. Uh, and on your drawing, it's very, very close from the roof, which in the end, it makes your your rarity looks like it. it's just standing a bit more uh, up. But I guess that's something you you can look out for if you wanted to recreate the exact same angle. Uh, you would have to place the camera a bit lower and change a tiny bit the the perspective to probably something that would be like that. It's Small detail. <laughs> uh, 
Do you got any further questions for us there, Zara? Yeah, seeing you do this sort of stuff is super cool because it's yeah. stuff that you want to do and it's uh, stuff that gets you interested and excited and I'm super excited when people draw things they want to draw. Uh, just to, because you say, yeah, your perspective is not half different. <laughs> like you, you place the camera in a different place and did it differently. <laughs> Yeah, it's hard to um, get things like looking, looking like this when you've got this sort of extreme angles going on. Mm. Actually, yeah, that's that's a that's a good thing, good point. Uh, so, de-emphasize all. Making so many layers. Um, when you've got like a what's called a single point perspective here, all of the background lines, so this line, this line, this line, this line, this line, they'll all sort of converge at a single point. It's important to sort of make sure that that single point is sort of placed in the right place. So at the moment, it's kind of a little bit all over the place, it looks like, roughly here. Um, but if you trace it through on the reference, uh, what I can see is get rid of all these lines. What I can see is I can see the um, that line ending up somewhere sort of around here, which which makes sense because where um we're usually sort of on or around about eye level with the subject which is the case here so if you've got sort of the point ending there if you look at the um the reference picture that's why these are so sort of exaggerated and you've got all these sort of like things look a little bit more like that There are some uh, courses and all that sort of stuff that really dig into um, uh, perspective and where to place things and all that sort of stuff, if you really want to. But yeah, Sarah Gamba is saying that they they did use uh, uh, the uh, line tools focusing on a single point, a disappearing point, to do the the background. I guess it's just a bit higher from where you're trying it, but it's always good mm -hmm. to. To try different perspectives and see what works the best. Mm. It's it's basically um, when when you're looking like sort of straight sideways, like we are here. The horizon line is going to sort of be on yeah. I don't know. It's it's a it's a bit of a sort of weird concept. But the horizon line is usually going to be a little bit below the um, the head, and so just like um, finding it out based on like the reference picture, sort of just like drawing directly over the top, tracing the background lines through, and sort of seeing where they end up can sort of help you position yours if you try and do stuff based on that reference. I'll probably be able to. Um, up some some of the courses I've been thinking of at some point and I'll just check them your way or something like that. I 
can see the picture you posted, the background picture. Yeah, the um, the the main thing is where you, depending on where this point is sort of placed, changes um, how everything else in the picture looks. So, for example, if the uh, single point is sort of down here, and you've got this, then this sort of hand here will be sort of roughly in this kind of like shape so that sort of matches up a bit whereas if uh, if it is sort of up here and everything meets sort of up here then this hand sort of thing will be something more along the lines of this so the hand so we'll see a lot more of sort of the top of the hand and we'll see this like a lot more straight on because everything sort of uh, relates to where everything lines up there it's it's pretty much the horizon line the thing that goes there everything above it is something that we're looking up at so we'd probably see sort of more of the inside plane of this hair and everything below it is stuff that we're looking down at so for example this we're looking down on top of and all that sort of stuff but no stress this this is all sort of stuff that you'll just pick up as you sort of draw more and as you practice uh sketching over the top of references and dig into perspective and all that sort of stuff so all good and no stress. And I think that's good. Yeah. Damn, Pixie. You knocked that one out of the park. <gasps> I try. Uh, which of these layers is the right one to erase and destroy? This is the one. It's a good sketch and good drawings, and I'm excited to see more of your stuff because you've got a lot of interesting human drawing things going on. Well, I hope from more perspective goes at it in the future. It's fun. A lot of good interior stuff, a lot of fun backgrounds and environments that, per pers uh, that perspective can help you with. And plus, you can get a lot of fun compositions when you learn to, like, push that perspective all crazy-like. Exacto Mundo. And I think that's mostly it, unless somebody has something, any other pictures they want to submit or get us to take a look at or anything like that. Or just any questions you have about art in general, we can try our best to answer. Or we can just lie and say we did. <gasps> dun, oh, dun, dun, dun. The betrayal, it's real. Yeah. So if you want to do good art, you need a lot of plants in your house. Lots of plants everywhere. It's <laughs> a way to do good art. Never fails. CPC, why are these two drawings down here so good? So I may have gotten a little bit distracted. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. All right. It's very adorable. I don't see anyone else. I'm blaming Ali. She she had the idea of this ghost creature. Now <laughs> I have to draw it. It and is fair. The idea of it just numbing the heads, like, oh, this is this is where I'm staying now. Yeah. 
Well, the chat seems quiet today. I think, yeah. uh, last, last call. For alcohol. Last, last call for the year. All right, well, with the utter silence, we're gonna call it a day. <laughs> so, thank you all for coming, and we'll see you again next time. Goodbye. Absolutely. Bye. See you, Strata. Bye, Strata. Bye. I like the little skulls in here.